THC, or Delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol, is a chemical that has been gaining a significant amount of attention in the media. THC is the principal psychoactive agent in cannabis sativa, the plant more commonly known as marijuana. The efficacy of marijuana and its recreational use have motivated both news headlines and ethical discussions. Perhaps you have heard of Charlotte Figgy, the little girl with Dravet syndrome, a severe form of childhood epilepsy whose debilitating seizures were treated by THC. Or maybe you have seen headlines about how Colorado's recent legalization of recreational marijuana has poured tax revenue into the public school systems. The question is, what is this chemical and how does it interact with our brains to evoke a physiological response? To begin to answer this question, we must look at the regulatory system that THC is involved with, and then we must examine its structure within this context. THC is a cannabinoid, a ligand that activates receptors and triggers signaling pathways in the endocannabinoid system, an important regulatory system in our body that modulates functions such as memory, appetite, and movement. These properties are controlled by the hippocampus, the hypothalamus, and the cerebellum, respectively. There is a high concentration of the cannabinoid receptor CB1, a G-protein coupled receptor, in these areas of the brain. Tetrahydrocannabinol has the ability to act as an agonist to these cannabinoid receptors and initiates a signaling cascade. How is this possible? Let's take a close look at the Lewis structure of THC. Tetrahydrocannabinol contains a polar phenolic hydroxyl group. This group is capable of forming a hydrogen bond with the receptor. Also, THC contains an alkyl tail. This hydrophobic substituent can associate with the hydrophobic residues on the receptor. Now let's explore how THC interacts with the CB1 receptor specifically. The phenolic hydroxyl group of THC forms a hydrogen bond with a glutamate residue on transmembrane helix 5, marked as residue 537. Its alkyl tail is associated with the hydrophobic area between helices 3, 6, and 7. This association is driven by the entropic favorability via the hydrophobic effect. It is astounding that tetrahydrocannabinol, a foreign chemical, has the ability to bind to these mammalian receptors so well. To better appreciate how this plant-produced chemical binds human receptors, we can compare THC's binding with that of an endogenous cannabinoid, that is, a cannabinoid produced naturally by our bodies. Anandamide, or AEA, is one of the most well-studied endocannabinoids. The structural similarities between THC and anandamide allow THC to act as an agonist for the same system. They both have hydrophobic alkyl tails and polar hydroxyl groups which allow them to interact with the cannabinoid receptors in a similar fashion. Here we can see an illustration of anandamide binding to the same CB1 receptor. The alkyl tail of anandamide associates with the phenylalanine residue F268 through sigma pi interactions. Its polar component is located between the transmembrane helices 3, 4, and 5, near threonine and glutamate residue. Both anandamide and THC binding cause a conformational change in the heptahelical receptor. How exactly does this conformational change come about? Upon ligand binding, aromatic side chains on the CB1 receptor rotate. The set of residues with aromatic side chains, which are responsible for this conformational change, are called the rotomer toggle. It is thought that the conformational change in the rotomer toggle switch may be responsible for early activation stages of the receptor. We can now take a look at an abbreviated version of the pathway signaled by cannabinoid ligands. Activation of the receptor motivates inhibitory G proteins to inhibit adenylate cyclases and therefore cease production of cyclic AMP, a second messenger. This corresponds with the inactivation of PKA and its phosphorylation pathway. Inhibitory G proteins can also stimulate the activation of mitogen-activated protein kinases, which alter gene expression, among other things. Stimulation of inhibitory G protein is also coupled with the inhibition of calcium channels and the activation of inward rectifier potassium channels. This increases the synaptic ionic gradient and depresses neurotransmitter release. This is the mechanism by which THC affects such things as memory, appetite, movement, and thinking.
Understanding THC's structure and the pathway that it signals is the first step in understanding how to exploit this chemical for medical use. It has been thought to be potentially helpful in treating a variety of conditions from post-traumatic stress disorder and Alzheimer's to glioma tumors. Understanding how THC affects the brain on the microscopic level may better help us to understand the arguments in favor of and against the use of medical marijuana and better equip us to join in the discussion.